Hey guys, today we're back on this Georgia Clay. Um, so today we are laying underlayment and we are installing our beautiful floors. I'm super excited about it. I know that um, it's gonna be a lot of back breaking work, but it's gonna be so worth the effort once it's all completed and we can finally start enjoying the space because we've been filled with dust and I am ready for the dust to go. So let's go ahead and get into today's walk. So before we started the project, we want to make sure that you have the cleanest surface as possible to lay your underlayment and your flooring. So Matt's just going around and using um, this floor scraper. It's kind of like a big squeegee for the floors. And he's getting any of the excess joint compound that may have fell while we were mudding the ceilings or walls. Um, so you want to make sure that you go around and do this as well. I can get this at either the Home Depot. We got ours from Floor and Decor. And I was trying to use <laughs> that heart um, shop vac or wet vac to vacuum up the floors rather than sweeping. And that thing was tearing up my back. It's too low. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> and so I paid the price. Um, so I'm just going around. I got matte shoes on. Um, trying to get some of the additional stuff off the floor that he may have missed. Um, but I am not made for manual labor. This has been something that has been challenging for me this whole project. Um, but I'm getting better, but I do have an appreciation of all the things that Matt does because it's a lot of work and um, I'm more so wanting to get the project done and he's like, no, we got to take our time and do it right. So this has tested me, but we're doing, going on just, just fine. So Matt's just walking the space and he's making sure that everything is up and we're doing, you know, as best as possible. But at this time he was actually needing to make sure that we had some areas in the concrete where the floor wasn't level. And so he's going around with his level, making sure that um, we address those areas before you put down the flooring because they have a dip or groove in the flooring, which is just not a good basis to start any project. So he found this um, stuff called a leveling agent. And basically it's just like a concrete filler that you put on the floor and it's self leveling. Um, so we got that from Home Depot and he was able to go ahead and um, set it up for us. So you're gonna wanna prime the space. It just allows for the um, leveler to adhere to the concrete a little bit better so he went ahead and put that around um, the areas that needed some improvement and um, yeah So now that we put down the concrete leveling agent and everything was nice and level, it was time to go ahead and start our project of putting down the underlayment. Um, we allowed it to dry overnight. Um, it doesn't need that long. I can't remember exactly how long it needs, but make sure that you follow the directions. So now we're putting down the underlayment and we tried to use these little um, pieces that you, know, that you go around the baseboard and they're like a little leveling clips um, or wedges. That thing did not work whatsoever. I don't know what was going on with those. Um, I think that they're kind of cheap and they just need to make a whole new um, process of, of, of doing that. Um, but yeah, it really wasn't ideal whatsoever. So 
So if you notice that we laid the underlayment going the opposite direction of where we decided to ultimately lay the floors, because this is something that the direction said. So make sure that you read the directions um, with your particular underlayment that you choose and make sure that you're laying it correctly before installing anything. But this does have a self-adhesive, um, so we're just going around and attaching one area to the next area and just going around the whole space and repeating the same steps. So when we decided to go ahead and lay the floors, it was important to give the illusion of the space being larger than what it is, but actually it is a pretty large space, but um, we went ahead and ran our floors going the long on, against the longest wall. If you start to do it on the shortest wall or doing it um, width wise, then it might make the space feel smaller than what it actually is. Um, so you wanna make sure that you lay the floors correctly and just you know get a, a taste or a feel of what your area actually is. So here Matt's just showing that this was a tongue and lock system. Um, so it was pretty simple, but you just needed to make sure that you are tapping it in correctly and making sure that everything lines up. Our kids actually got in on this and wanted to help out. So there goes Leah helping out dad. So it ended up being a great family project. I didn't know that the kids were gonna be so interested in helping us with the floors, um, but they did and they helped out as much as possible. So again, we're just going and repeating the full process. You're gonna line up one board to the next board. We're gonna use a sample board just to make sure that the two boards are nice and straight um, together and then you're gonna use that tapping block to tap it in. And that's pretty much it. And you're just gonna repeat the same process going through the full, the full space. Um, of course, when you get to any door jams or anything like that, you're gonna wanna make sure that you cut those boards appropriately for that space. But it pretty much was a fun and easy project. Um, would I do it again? Um, I don't know. <laughs> but other than that, um, we had a great time with it. It just was, it was long. So when you're um, starting your first couple of rows, you're gonna wanna make sure that you put some boxes down on there to give some weight. And also make sure that you stagger your seams. Um, you don't want these seams to be all the same. So you don't want the rows to repeat exactly the same. So normally what you'll do is when you end one row, you'll take that remaining portion and start the next row. Or if you don't have enough of that particular board, just cut one board and then stagger it and kind of make sure that it gives a nice seamless look rather than it looking like it's just completely choppy. try to do I think we could do all of this tomorrow <laughs> I'm trying to finish up tomorrow I think we got the hang of it now so um yeah but it's like what 10 o'clock now and so we can't do any more cuts because you know our neighbors um we do care about them <laughs> so we're gonna call it a night All right, so it was day two, and um, the reason why we didn't get so much of the flooring done on day one is because we do have full-time jobs, and we have our children, and we just can't really designate a particular day to do the full floor. This is something that you probably could have done in a day, but for us, it, it does 
stagger between a couple of days or so. Um, but Matt needed to go ahead and cut the flooring. Now we do have a miter saw or two of them. Um, this is not a flooring that you need fancy tools or anything for. It's just what we have on hand already from our various projects. So you can use a jigsaw. They do have um, a floor cutter kind of similar to a tile cutter that would just cut that for you as well. It'll score it and just pop it. Um, so you can use some other tools that are not as expensive. These We just use the tools that we had on hand. So don't be intimidated that you don't have particular tools to complete a project like this. There are various other options that you can use to make it more cost effective for you. So we came up with this little hack where we used a piece of a two by four that Matt cut down um, and he put some rug tape that I had around the house on it to adhere to the board. So basically we used it as a tapping block when the tapping block that the kit came with didn't particularly fit in a certain area that we needed and it worked out tremendously. So it didn't move or anything. It was um, adhering to that particular LVP plank and we just used it and tapped it into space uh, into place. So that's something that you can get creative and, and just do that and it doesn't mess up the floors or anything like that. So you'll want to make sure as well when you're putting the board down not to repeat the pattern on the board. So each box came with like maybe four or five different prints um, as far as the graining on the laminate. So you'll want to make sure that you're not repeating one plank next to the next plank. Um, so that's something that you'll want to keep track of. So some of the areas um, we did need to use a table saw to take off some of the board so we can go ahead and, and fit it within a space. You can use a circular saw if you don't have a table saw. Um, again, we're just using the, the particular tools that we have on hand. So a little side note, like look at that view. It's so beautiful in our backyard. We have some projects for spring coming up. I can't wait to get outside. We'll switch gears a little bit. Um, later on and stop showing so much of the basement and get outside and really take advantage of this weather that's been good in um, Georgia so far. Look, it's coming together. It's looking so good in that space. Um, I feel like the color was just point on um, of what I wanted in that space just to keep it nice, light, and bright. And finally, here I come to come and help out Matt. Um, again, he usually has more free time um, than I do. Um, as far as my job, I, it takes a lot to just um, try to get some free time away when I can, like either on lunches or breaks or things like that. So trying the best that I can to help him out, but usually I can only help when I'm off of work. So after Matt gave the girls a little demo um, of how you're supposed to lay the floors, they actually 
did a pretty darn good job. Um, my daughter, my oldest one, had to go to work, but when she got back home, she came back and helped out and everything, and they did an awesome job. They loved it. They worked together on this project. wasn't too much arguing, <laughs> um, but they got it done. Um, it was girl power, and, and it was just in, it was just exciting to see them working together. And then also, um, you know, our oldest is 17 years old, so eventually she'll have her own home, and so she'll be empowered to do projects like this in her own space. But of course, she knows that she can call mom and dad to help out and make her first place look just as beautiful as our home. <music> Alright, so we accomplished a lot in day two. Now it was day three. <laughs> Again, this project could be done in a day, but we just don't have the time to do it. So we're just doing it as we can. Um, so Matt's now going into his office space. Um, so he's putting the first um, plank there to create sort of the threshold of the door. And then he's just again following the same process that we did throughout the whole main area of the gym and um, going from there. But it's really starting to take shape. It looks so good, especially that light color in his dark, moody, masculine office space. Um, it really you know, helps to lighten up the space quite a bit. We had finally came to the finish line and the floors are finally done. Of course, baseboards will be the next thing that we install, um, but it looks so good going throughout the space and just really enjoying it. Um, and there's some areas in my office that still needed some flooring, but Matt did go ahead and add those and they're already installed now, but it looks amazing. I really love it. And for the price, you couldn't beat the project whatsoever. All right, guys, so let me know what you guys think in the comments of the space. I think the floors really bring it all together. We still have a lot more to do. Um, this project is taking a little longer than what we anticipated, but it's truly a labor of love and we're enjoying it. We're just taking our time trying to make sure that we finish it the proper way. Um, so we are making some um, corrections on the drywall here, making, you know, make sure the imperfections are taken care of. So Matt did a little bit more muddy that we'll soon paint over once it's dry. Um, but I'm really loving it. I love, like I said, how the floors came out. The color is spot on and the price was amazing too. So we can't go, go wrong with that. Savings is everything in this project. So with the savings on the floor, um, we spent about six to $700 on materials altogether. Um, so it was really, it was good. I mean, that 79 cents a square foot really helped out. Um, we kept saying a thousand square feet and obviously <laughs> the math was not mathing. Um, and it, it wasn't, we took about 20 boxes back. We purchased 40 boxes of flooring and took 20 boxes back. So you just do the math on how far we were off. Um, but yeah, so we were able to keep that money and then allocate it to other areas of the project. So Matt already has his built-ins in the project, which we're supposed to go here. That's a whole kind of situation. So we'll talk about that in a later vlog. Um, so yeah, so we're working on that process now and revamping my office space figuring out um, because the layout has changed and so has the ideal. So I think we're gonna be focusing on his um, office because it's just coming together a little bit better than what mine is um, currently. Um, so Matt did some more money here in my office as well. I'm gonna get ready today to do an accent wall as well as my coffee bar. So that is coming as well. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. Um, please, again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And to all of the winners that won last week or I um, 
and buy a symbol last week for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Have already collected their $50 Target gift card. So again, congratulations, ladies. And we'll do another one once we hit 15,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, share it with a friend, and we will see you guys next week. Bye, guys. I got more to give. I know that this world is all I'm giving, and all of these thrills don't count for living. A little more will is all it takes, so I persevere. I'm not afraid, and right when it's falling off, not all this loss is giving me.